out of right. This is Will Sanchez. My very special guest tonight is Isang Smith. This is a very special show of Gotta Run because this will be the last show that will be using this equipment. MNN will be upgrading for the next couple of months, and when we come back on the air, we will be totally all digital and highly professional. Stay tuned for that. I heard of, about Isang because she was one of the administrators for the Anyway Marathon that replaced the New York City Marathon that was canceled. So this is a very interesting show. So please welcome Isang Smith. Thanks for having me. Great. Let's get started by sharing with us a little bit about yourself. For example, where were you born? A little bit about your family, something about your schooling. Sure. Originally from Southern California in a little city called Moreno Valley, which not many people know about, um, but it's 45 minutes southeast of LA. So I just say LA for people and uh -huh. it usually flies. Um, and, you know, born and raised there, left there, um, going to college here, so, you College know. in New York? Yes, I went to uh, Columbia University for track and field, um, so I've been here in the city for about seven years now. Wait a minute, you could go to college to learn track and field? Yes, it, I learned a lot, <laughs> and I learned there is a bigger world out there leaving Reno Valley, so, um, yeah, it was a very, very awesome journey so far coming here to the city. Oh, cool. before we get yeah. to the city as a child, were yeah. you athletically inclined? Well, pretty much the running phase started because I used to race kids in the streets of my neighborhood. Um, you know, I hung out with a lot of boys growing up and I was a tomboy at heart. And it usually came down to if I wanted to go to 7-Eleven and get some Slim Jims or, you know, some, you know, icy, you know, some of the ICs, I would go ahead and like do a bet with one of the guys for if I beat him up the street, then somebody owed me an icy. So I would somebody go ahead. Owed you. Yeah, <laughs> it worked out. Actually, that would be fine. New York, you got to pin him down. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, I know what I want. Let's go run because I know I'm faster than most of you. It just worked out that way in elementary school. And I had the hugest crush on uh, Marco Torres, who, you know, in sixth grade and stuff, I was like, where's he going? And he would always like stay after school doing um, the 5K club. Uh -huh. My mom, when she found out there was a lot of food at the end too, she would bring the shopping bags and she was happy I was racing. And, and you had crushes at 10 and 11? I suppose so, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can remember quite clearly, yes. That's in very interesting yeah. because hearing you talk about it, I could have imagined that in New York because New York has a 7 Eleven. We have streets. Yes. We have boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, definitely. Um, it's, it's definitely one of the same, but then again, it's not. Like, we, we had a free range to do whatever we please, like running around in the fields. Um, where I grew up, there was a lot of orchards and, you know, um, a lot of farms, as you would say, a lot of cows. <laughs> oh, cool. So. so you came to Columbia to yeah. study track and field. I did, yeah. And what? Made you decide that was the career for you? They recruited me. Um, so the fun part about track and field, when before I entered high school, my sister had a dance recital and she had me tag along. I was an eighth grader looking forward to joining high school. Um, and the middle school was right next to the high school. And so this is like big experience for me. I was crossing over into the new, the new world, as you would say, before I was supposed to. My first track coach loves to tell people is that the way I found track and field was because I was walking around and I saw the track in the distance and the lights were on. I saw this really fast girl, like she just zoomed by, you know, and she like disappeared behind the bleachers. And I was like, interesting, there's just, like someone running down there. And the closer I got, I saw there's a lot more kids just running really fast. In my mind, I said, I could beat those kids. You know, I could beat those kids. <laughs> and you were what age at that time? Um, in eighth grade, so 13 years 13. old or so. We already had the yeah. competitive spirit. The hilarious part was I did go to the practice the next night and I was wearing my jeans. <laughs> so it didn't really occur to me that maybe there's proper gear that you should always usually have for track. Went ahead and sprinted the hardest I could. And um, <laughs> that was great because my, my future coach, um, Mike Millen, saw me sprint with all my heart, and he, he loved it. He saw the form, and he was like, she has potential. Um, and then I found out that that's an interval workout and that there were more 200s after that. <laughs> but it was a great first you know, introduction to track and field, and that's how it all kind of took off from there. So. I think, were you doing hurdles at some point? Yes, so the hurdles came in in high school. My coach, Coach Richard Hernandez, he uh, saw that I was just crazy, I suppose. <laughs> that's my nature, I'm very impulsive, and you know, if someone challenges me to something, I'm like, I'm gonna give it a go. Hurdles is actually the reason that I got put onto the national stage, because I was ranked um, like in the top 10 for the 300 hurdles in high school. I got seen by colleges and like Columbia like Columbia I um you know never really considered to like go 
to college, I suppose, in that way. But then when they were like, you could go to college because of track, I said, sure, let's go give it a try. And your so, parents could thrill. They were, yeah, yeah. My mother was very, very thrilled. She, um, you know, it, it was such a blast. And just the recruiting trips and everything was, um, it was fun to go there and just get toured around and fed and just like said, you should come hang out with us. And you felt, you felt pretty popular doing that for a bit. So yeah, then I chose Columbia because it, it just felt like the right place to go to. Cool. That's a four-year program? All four years, I had the opportunity to compete on the collegiate level. Looking back, that was a great, you know, experience. I had the highs and I had the lows. Got sick and, you know, just being on my own now as an adult and stuff. My freshman year wasn't like my highlight track, you know, track uh, experience. Were you um, in a dorm situation? Yeah, I was, I was in a dorm. You know, I've, I actually, I had a pretty lucky. I had, um, I had a single three out of the four years. Just, just, just luck, you know, luck. the lottery system too at Columbia, they, they okay. would give a lottery to the kids okay. and stuff. And, you know, if you got the right draw, you got a pretty good room. So mm -hmm. it worked out. So that was your first time you know, out of college? I slipped a hundred dollar bill or something <laughs> like that. Oh, so. you learned that quickly. Yeah, <laughs> 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 that now? Yeah. Well, that I was mean, your yeah. first time out of California was New York? I got to go to the Philippines in 1996, and I would say that's probably my biggest adventure out of um, California growing Wait, up. What's your nationality, Philippine? Yeah, so oh. I'm, I'm half Filipino, half Irish, and, you know, just, what I don't look... What a combination. I don't look any, any way which Irish I... Irish and Filipino. Yeah, I, um, I show up at some of my Filipino gatherings, um, relatives or friends, and, you know, there's usually the question mark, like, really? You're you're one of us? Even if I'm, like, we're related, I, it's just a, a funny thing. It's like, I, I definitely don't look the part for, you know... Filipino, but um, you know, I could I could eat like one. So oh, you eat. <laughs> <laughs> we have really good food, and I dig right in. I, I'm okay. very comfortable with the cuisine over oh, there. Oh, cool. Yeah. Now your name is Esong. Does it mean something? Esong is actually my Panay nickname. Um, Isa is one, Ung yeah. is the, and it means pretty much the one in a translation. Um, there's Bicol and T Tagalog as the main um, dialects for our language and the Philippines, and so. I just, I picked that name up from my relatives. They called me Esong growing up. And um, I, you know, I related to it more. I related to it more um, going to college and stuff. I just wanted to try and change, you know, change some things around. And I wanted to just call myself Esong. Oh, and, certainly yeah. unique. Thank you. And it's yeah. beautiful. Esong. Thank you. Thank you. I like to confuse people too. Now you finish college and you got mm -hmm. your degree in track and field. That's kind of strange. I got a degree in track and field. It sounds Psychology, like a, actually. Yes. I, I wish there was a degree in track and field, too, because it's just like the more degrees, the merrier. Um, I did get a, a nice, you know, ring for being in track and field. I got, you know, just all four years, um, you know, recognition. Uh, but I did get my degree in psychology. So oh, it was a, wow. yeah, that was a blast too. Psychology. Psychology oh and track and field. It well, made there, college awesome. There's a lot of psychology yeah. going when you're running competitively. Yep, there is. <laughs> but I it's guess, I guess one of the things you could do with Sid is uh, teach, uh, be a coach at a school. Funny you mentioned that. Well, I am a coach at a school. Which one? <laughs> so there you go. Uh, Common of the Sacred Heart. Um, it's a private Catholic school for girls on 91st and 5th. You mean so. girls only? They still yes, girls only. Yes. They still have those. Oh, yes, they do. So 91st and 5th, you could see just, you know, from the bottom up um, all the way to senior year, you know, preschool to senior. It's a, it's a pretty awesome environment. Oh, cool. Yeah. And you're, you're the coach there? Yes. Um, now, this season, I'm pretty much starting out as a head coach. Last season, I was the assistant coach for hurdles and sprints. I'm just going through all the lists and, you know, game plans that we could do with the program. And it's a very exciting time for me because I've never – I never considered myself to, um, you know, be able to coach or at least to like to be given this role is a pretty awesome opportunity. Wow. So. Now, this is to all the grade levels or the seniors or? Um, so I'm doing varsity track and field. Uh -huh. So it's going to be 8 grade. to 12th grade. Yeah. And what is the age? Oh, uh, well, 13 to 18. Yeah. So your psychology will come in very handy. It's, it's been coming in handy. Um, you know, these girls are very mature and they're very smart and I love it. It's, um, you know, when, when working with them, you know, just treating them with respect as the young adults that they are, you know, we have a great, you know, communication going on. And, you know, working with them, you could see it's just like the wheels turning in their head of how to just be better to, you know, make the best of a situation. Um, so it's really, it's really interesting. It's very different, 
you know, since it's a small school, uh -huh. small environment, we don't have necessarily like a track facility right outside of the school. We have Central Park. Um, so it's, you know, a lot of improvising on how to make the practices go with that group of girls. I have about 25 so far for the indoor season. Well, that's so cool. There. I guess you also probably go to the Armory for the new bat because yeah. they, they have a huge program there. They do, yeah. They, they open it to high schools for Tuesday and Thursday um, afternoons. So. Interesting. I think you also run for City Coach. I do, yes. And for some reason, City Coach seems to attract teachers because I've met two <laughs> other runners, yeah. Francis LaRosse. La yeah. It's becoming a teacher, mm -hmm. and Nicole Senque is also a, t a school teacher. All the smart ones. Did, did they recruit you? <laughs> you know, actually, just to sum it up, this whole past year, I, I'm still shocked at how everything changed for me. I'm in the running community now um, more than I ever thought I could be. It was a very interesting time a year ago where I felt, you know, that I didn't know where I was going. It was really scary for me. I just like, I want to do something that I love, and what I love is, you know, just helping people feel better, you know, about their fitness and their health. And so, fortunately, Jack Rabbits, um, you know, reached out to me and asked, "Do you want to go ahead and help coach a class?" And at this, at the same time, I was in massage school, so I'm pretty much a student. My gosh, you do you do it I'm all. I'm doing a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, I was, I was in massage school for at the Swedish Institute for, you know, two years, and you know, in the middle of the program, I left my job at NYU. So at that time, that's why I was also scared. I'm paying you know, for education, and at the same time, I'm not really working um, in a job that pretty much was consistent and everything of that nature. So you took a leap of, of took faith a leap on of yourself. Faith. Uh, yeah, I just, I realized I wasn't happy sitting down in front of a computer that long, and I wanted to see people and interesting. engage you're, differently. Interesting, so. you're such a young person, and usually people yeah. just they go on that. years and years and years until they yeah. become bitter. I told you before, I was impulsive, so, you know, if you look at my track record, um, and life, it just goes to show I, I jump around just exploring new things because I, I love learning. And, um, you know, getting getting the opportunity to coach, I wanted to learn more about that too. Okay. And having that experience with track and field, it just, it worked out beautifully. Let's so. get back to the Swedish Institute. Yeah. Is that in Sweden or in New York? Here in New York. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, on 26th and 7th, um, one of the oldest massage schools in the U.S. and cool. pretty incredible program. So many modalities. Um, some of the main ones are deep tissue, Swedish, shiatsu. Um, you could pick reflexology. I'm going to learn twina. I'm What is twina? Twina, it's more pressure points on the meridian uh, lines within the body. So Eastern theory pretty much, you know, sees the body as a series of like lines, meridians that go through where energy flows through. Right, right. And the idea is if you have any complications or, you know, ailments, you are, you know, experiencing stagnation of chi, which is how they describe energy flowing through your body. Lifetime uh, educational opportunity exactly. and you can learn yeah. teach uh, help so many people yeah exactly and I you know the healing arts for me I, I f realized that's something I I meant to do because growing up too I found that every single time someone was just in pain or wanting something I always wanted to be the person to give them a solution so um, healing arts is just a combination of just continuing you know continuously learning being compassionate um, I recently picked up martial arts um, Kali <laughs> Filipino martial arts because you know they say some of the best warriors are also the best healers and just to learn how to move and to you know, pretty much be aware to be present. That's that's key to being a good therapist. Cool. So, yeah. so with Jack Rapids, I've got a feeling that's how you got connected to City Coach. Exactly. You are right. Well, yes. um, <laughs> because, through Jack Rapids. Right. Yeah. Yes. Because I know Jonathan Kane has a great yeah. relationship with yeah. Lee Silverman. What happened was I, you know, I was learning more about the multi-sport world because um, my friend um, Jay Pasquale, who actually is the founder of Team Takbo, he and I met at massage school, and he told me, "Hey, do you know you could do?" more than run in a race. I'm like, what do you mean? He said, you could also bike, you could swim. I'm like, why would anyone want to do that? You know, like running's hard enough. You don't really have to complicate things. All the transitioning into what Jackrabbits was like now working with Jackrabbits, now coaching, I decided to get more serious about it. Because before I was, you know, playing around, I reached out to Kane and I met him and his awesome baby Simon. And, you know, they... Oh, this is very recent. Yes, very recent. So, yeah. Simon <laughs> just celebrated his one year birthday. Exactly, exactly. We were all very happy about it. I, I 
believe I sent you a picture with Simon in it, where he's the pride and joy, and joy of uh, City Coach. So he actually came into the store, and we met there, and with Simon, I'm like, oh, I would love to hang out with you. It's just like, for Simon, anything. I would like, <laughs> you know, I'll hang out with you for sure. Oh, like, so yeah. that's Coach, si I mean, Coach Kane's yeah. uh, recruiting technique is yeah, now to have a baby. Uh, baby, the baby. <laughs> yeah, just like, we're nice people. Look at my baby. <laughs> so. Future uh, two-hour marathon. <laughs> 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 Or he wants people on his team that respect each other. They're good, you know, good sportsmanship. And at the end of each race, you know, I would, I would imagine most city coach athletes go ahead and shake the hands of their competitors. Which, you know, I have to, you know, I have to say, like hanging out too with Nicole and right. some other city coach athletes. It's like, of course, like you know, I, I look up to them for that a lot of things cool. and that behavior. Like yeah. it just, it, it means a lot to people to have that. So well, I think I recall when we, when I was in high school, we used to do that. I mean, remember we would shake the hands yeah. of the opponents afterwards. Yeah. No. So I'm glad coach Kane is it's traditional yeah. in that way. Yeah. No, he, he mentioned he really loved that image um, that city coach gives off to people is that we really respect each other and we're, we're here for each other. And that's why I felt it was the right team for me. It wasn't, right. it wasn't a silly business. Right. And, um, you know, I didn't know I was getting myself into, <laughs> <laughs> It's like, oh, there's uh, there's these ladies called the Uptown Ladies work out either at the Riverbank track or at the Yankee Stadium. And from there, it just I got to be part of a, an amazing group and um, some pretty fast people. Um, I'm still taking on the distance thing. Uh, I have my Philly Marathon on Sunday, and I don't know um, how some of them do it, but I am going to get a marathon <laughs> oh, done. Oh, is that your so first marathon? It will be my first marathon. Oh. New York City was actually oh, supposed to oh, be my first marathon, but thanks to Run Anyway, it worked out where oh, okay. I participating in the environment at least. So. Okay. Let's talk about the Anyway Marathon because New York, as you mentioned, got canceled and that was going to be your first. Obviously, you were disappointed at many levels. Yes. But you did something about it. You were impulsive. So tell us about the Anyway <laughs> Marathon. Yes. So the Run Anyway Marathon happened because like you said, the marathon, New York City Marathon was canceled. Um, I just, the whole week leading up to it, there was, I was conflicted, I was anxious just to see the media storm happening because the marathon was still on as a runner and as a coach and, you know, just trying to be a good role model too. It's like, what do I do? Because I, I knew that in going to Staten Island, especially knowing how tough the situation, the situation was down there, it just, uh, I just didn't feel comfortable doing it, but I decided to when I saw that they were going to be fundraising for the relief efforts when they wanted to run to raise awareness about um, the victims and their situation. I said, all right, you know, I want to do that. I, f I feel better as long as they make the right decisions about how to, you know, the resources and where everything would go. Right, right. Um, you know, I, I had faith in them that they would handle it correctly, um, but as you know, it didn't really didn't really amount to that and um, everything that happened like the n negative comments that were thrown at runners and um, you know the New York road runners alike there there is a there's a lot of tension in the air and it may it really disheartened me because I saw some things online and I heard some things from some people that I'm like you know runners actually aren't bad people or you know we don't we don't do our sport to as there was one comment that got to me calling us narcissistic joggers I was like, no, I, I don't know actually if you if you know much mm -hmm. about this community, if you're right, right away right. jumping onto that. Like for me, the passion is that it's like, do you know what our obesity rates are in this country? Do right, you know, right. you know, anything about like what's going on with our health, with diabetes? I think running, you should give running a fair chance and you should not point at runners and say, you guys are terrible human beings. Like the situation, obviously the emotions were high. So it's really hard to dissect like who was right, who was wrong. It really was just some unnecessary comments that came up. Right, right. Um, so the way it worked was when they canceled the marathon, I was really sad. Uh, this was on yes. a Friday, late Friday, Friday, I yes, believe. Yes, at 6 p.m. actually. Uh, we were just besides ourselves and I Where actually... Where were you at 6 p.m. Friday? So I was actually going to be doing a, another event with um, with Nike. We were supposed to be doing um, what's called the Rebel Run and um, my boyfriend Kevin actually, he was putting on that production and uh -huh. we were waiting actually to go with a bunch of college kids to just take off but then they decided to cancel it in light of the marathon being canceled. So all running events across the board were canceled that evening and oh. we were... Uh, we actually ran anyways to... <laughs> <It's> called <laughs> yeah. Rebel, right? Yeah, it was called Rebel. Perfect. With, with the <laughs> right like, name. Oh. Yeah, just went ahead and uh, took off in the streets, and just we all hung out that night okay. and just kind of 
tried to get uh, all our frustrations off our chest and okay, settle something down. Okay, happened because in the yeah. background here we yes. have the Run Anyway yeah. Marathon banner and it's yep. hundreds of signatures on it. Yeah, if only we had like maybe, it, we probably need a building to fill up more of the signatures that day, that morning. I know not everyone could sign it, but hopefully we could have that opportunity okay. again for a so, bigger So one. how yeah. did this come about? Um, so Saturday morning, I, I woke up <laughs> and I said, all right, I guess I'll just try and run and just maybe, you know, I had the Philly Marathon coming up, but I, you know, I, I definitely felt deflated. I was supposed to have my mom come out. I was, there's many things that obviously didn't happen. Right. And it was a minor inconvenience in light of, you know, what happened with the hurricane and right. the people that suffered because of it. But at the same time, I just, you know, I was very um, besides myself. Like, I just didn't really feel inspired to do much. And um, I looked on online and, you know, I saw my friends messaging me like, hey, you know, we're going to be in the park and just go ahead and run, you know, just we'll just do 26 and stuff. I said, OK, that's cool. And then my friend mentioned, uh, hey, that's awesome that you're doing that, you know, that relief effort. I said, what are you talking about? She said, oh, the Run Anyway page. I said, okay, what is that? She said, you know, Facebook it. I Facebooked it. You know, it had about 100 followers um, Saturday morning. I said, perfect, 100 people, awesome. I'll join in that crowd too because, you know, the more the merrier. So I liked the page. Um, and as the morning progressed, you know, I was, I was like looking at it and I saw they were getting, you know, a few more followers and I saw that they had a plan. It was to raise money and supplies to bring down to the victims of the hurricane. And I just got curious. I, I was like, I wonder if I could help them promote it. So I messaged Lance, who is a creator of Run Anyway, and I was like, hey, maybe you should go ahead and print out some flyers and pass it to people in the park. You could definitely get a lot more people to hang out and run with you. Uh, he's like, great idea. He's like, cool. And then uh, then that, that pattern continued the rest of the morning where we were exchanging ideas. Um, and as it turned out, you know, he and I, we then spoke on the phone because it just seemed like we had a lot of ideas in common. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to, like, see this come through because I saw the potential with the name. Like, I identified it with it right away. You know, we were raising money for the relief efforts. I said, hey, let's, um, let's talk about coordinating. Maybe I could bring on a friend, my friend Pat, um, who helped also with, like, the supplies and donations that day. Um, and we just, it just became a very official, unofficial event occurring so the marathon that actually happened yes exactly okay. we had a paypal account set up and checks were to be brought that morning oh, up. So. yeah really <laughs> grassroots we uh we definitely um yeah we what? definitely started from scratch and the funny part is i didn't even know lance we haven't really ever well we didn't know each other so pretty much we were going to meet in the park that morning of and hope that an event that about 2,000 people already saying they were going to come. We hoped that it would be okay for that many people to collect in one spot in the park. I actually didn't sleep that night because I was constantly replying to emails and trying to, you know, get people to know, like, hey, you know, we're, we're just going to meet up, and it'd be awesome to have you there. And, you know, no bag drop, no official guaranteed anything. It's just people said they're going to come out and we're going to hang out and just go. And we'd love for you to represent the causes that you right, came right. out to represent in the first place. Okay. Yeah. The Red Colton team did something with their group and yeah. I don't know if they intersected with you guys or, you know, it was just amazing. Yeah, I mean, I heard at the end of the day they estimated more than 20,000 runners in the park. The media took off with the name Run Anyway as the platform for what actually happened that day. We, you know, we were so happy that with that one event we were able to raise $16,000 that day Day, fill five trucks with supplies. I know the uh, the foreign runners also participated because yeah. they were reaching out to other members yeah. and they said, <laughs> go to Central Park at yeah. 8 o'clock in the Somebody's morning. Somebody's going to be there. It was, and it was, so you it had an international kinda, it was, coalition. It was brilliant. Actually, I, I remember reading one of the one of my favorite wall posts on that page was, you know, oh, we're going to be there in 100 Aussies with us. <laughs> it's like, this is great. The Australians are coming. The Irish are coming. It really was becoming an international fair. So uh, we were very excited to see who would actually show up. First arrived and had some of the donation signs and everything. The officials became cur became curious and, you know, I wanted to help out, um, you know, Lance and his friends because, you know, them being from Jersey, I think um, my experience, I just wanted to, like, say, hey, you know, it's in New York, they, they really are just, like, you know, this is how it's going to be. So right, right. I tried to, like, make that, like, buffer for everybody and just be like, look, we're willing to compromise. I understand having this many people, they were talking about crowd control issues. Right. But over time, you know, we set the runners off in waves. I was, like, megaphone happy, just trying to get people, like, pumped up, here we go, like, Lance and everyone else was just, like, having, we were having a blast. And everyone's here for a positive that's reason. Right. There's no no trouble to be created. Wow, we just wanted a, to run. That's such a beautiful thing. It was that, great, yeah. Really that, great morning. Uh, 
you did something in New York where you didn't have to go through a lot of red tape. You know, you that figured was, it out yes. on the spot. The beautiful part was the runners. I at first thought that they, some people would be disappointed because we said 9 a.m. national anthem. That's what's oh, going to be right. done. And you had your friend Anna. Yes, from Jackrabbits. <laughs> But I think we have some guests here. We do. That your fans? Or, oh no, actually yeah. these are your fellow uh, co-workers now. Co-workers now. <laughs> yeah. Last the original idea, man. Well, come on up. We yes. want to wrap up. Hello. Oh, did you bring something? <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Lance. Oh, sure. This is Coco. Oh, you're Coco. Coco. <laughs> Coco. I'm Lance. You're Lance. All yes. right. Which is Roy. And <laughs> yeah, Uncle Roy was the reason I was running the marathon in the first place. Yeah. Oh, you so, were doing it for his memory or his? Yes, uh, to raise money for his family and to raise money for ALS, which is two guys, Bob Gaunt and uh, uh, Uncle Tim Beck. So that's the reason I decided to run and... Um, that's the, where the idea for the run anyway came from. Well, that's great for you guys to. Are that's you guys nice. going to? Uh, oh, low five, low five, low five. Oh. <laughs> are you guys going to do it again next year? Are you going to make it an annual event? Uh, you know, I think that we are not arguing with that idea at all. Yeah. Right now, we're kind of really trying to plan our next event and really continue the the grassroots. Great, I mean, really. yeah. and you attracted people like uh, I mean, Isang. More of a blessing. I mean, she's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Bright stars through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly sweet And the rockets regular The bombs bursting That our flag was still there. Oh, say.